Alrighty. Hi everyone. Um, this is our first. This is our first. Um, I don't know what we want to call it. It's fireside chat, but there's no fireside. And uh, just picking some topics that we can discuss and introduce to you and um, banter around some ideas we have around the various topics. So. Today, we're starting out with um, transition training, I'm gonna call it. And that can be different times of year for uh, different athletes, for different uh, cyclists, depending on your, your focus and, and uh, the disciplines that you do, of course. But I wanna talk just about the general concept of a reset. It's like a reset. So lots of us, because we are in the sport of cycling, tend to have a summer-ish ending in fall um, kind of program. So we have some of our bigger goals. Lots of you are familiar with the concept of having, um, sometimes they're referred to as A, B, C goals. Um, whatever they are, the, the idea is that not everything you do is the most important event that you're going to do in the year. So you might have some that are specifically identified as I want to do really well there, right? So there's a lot of a build up to that event. And then once it's done, um, often a little bit of a anticlimactic feeling as well, because you finish this big thing, you put a lot of energy into it. It might have been a lot of months, uh, might have been a year and for a lot of people in this current state of the last few years because we are talking about coming out of um, a pretty strange time having had the pandemic um, for some people they put off these goals over and over again and actually had a two to three year span between the things that they started out working towards to now um, culminating in it's done and what are we gonna do next kind of thing. So the first thing of course, enjoy and reflect on what you've done. Um, sometimes it's enjoy, sometimes uh, we're gonna be disappointed or uh, we feel we fell short. It's really important to take out of it the good and to learn from it, whether you feel like it was a positive or you feel like you fell a little bit short, it's important to reflect on it, give yourself a little bit of a time and then reflect on it. Um, it's easy when you've had a result that on paper you're happy with. Um, it's very, actually it's very, a very good idea to choose other things to assess yourself. So not always the on paper result, um, but hopefully that going into your plan has been part of what you've done. And so you've, you've looked at the event, you've said, what do I want out of this event? You've talked to your coach or your friends or your family about what you want to do. And some events very easy to identify a time um, or a pace or something like that. Sometimes you've just said, I want to be better than last time I did it. And so that's an easy one to assess. Quite often when you have a real result, especially at the introductory levels and recreational, when you have a real result like a time or I'm going to beat that person, that's a bad one actually, quite often I'm going to I'm gonna be here in my age group. Those kinds of goals can be sometimes disappointing, not because of your performance or that you didn't do well, but because you're basing yourself on what other people have done and that can be really flawed because you have no control over what they have done for their preparation or what their day is about. So you want to have gone into this with some real idea of things that you're going to be able to tick off and you're going to be able to say, yeah, I did that well. Yeah, I did that well. Mm, that needs some improvement. So you've come out of your event. You're excited, maybe a bit kind of Sometimes it feels a little anticlimactic because you've had so much focus on this, but you want to be thinking about all of those things. You want to be reflecting. If you had a disaster, sometimes it's really hard to identify anything that you feel is positive, but I bet there'll be something. 
I bet there'll be something that you can look at and go, okay, well, I did do that well, right? Or at this point, when I was falling apart, I came around and I recovered and I regrouped and I came back to the program. Or I finished well. Or I started well and then I fell apart. So you can look at all of these things and take something from it. And that's really important because now we're talking about transition and what are you going to do moving forward. Now if you have a coach, someone you rely on to talk to, obviously that is going to be really valuable at this point. But even if you don't, you've reflected, you've put these elements together, and now you can think about, out of that experience, think about what are some things that you could actually do to improve next time. We just had a, um, a just gonna reflect on an event that we just did with a lot of people, and um, there were, a lot of our crew, I'm going to say, that have put quite an effort into training for this Fondo event. And, <clears throat> you know, I know from having seen them ride that their expectations and their, let's say, time goals um, were very realistic. Woke up, blazingly windy day, lots of elements that were a little bit out of control for people in that event. And so, just focusing on the time, I'm going to break this time, there were a fair number of riders saying, well, I really thought I'd do better than that. My time wasn't very good. Well, then you want to look at, okay, first of all, it was the day, it affected everybody, it's unfortunate, but also you want to look at all the other things that you did right and the things that you succeeded in during that event. So. That's a starting point for the next time around or the next thing you do. So in transition, what we look at is we've reflected on the positives and the negatives or we've conceded there were negatives and now we want to take that apart a little bit and think about what are we going to do moving forward. Um, a simple example is um, identifying that towards the end of the event, you just didn't really have the juice or the gas or whatever. Um, so maybe there's an endurance element that you want to work on. Um, there were times during the event that you couldn't respond to big surges in power or you couldn't come back from them. That's another thing to specifically work on throughout the year or throughout the time coming up to the next event. Um, a little bit unprepared at the start and got taken by surprise. Well, that's an easy thing to think through and to plan for. And some people are really good at reacting and um, things get thrown at them and they can kind of change the channel and just, you know, go with the flow and make an adjustment. Some people are very, very kind of stuck in the box of what they thought they were going to do and then there's a change and it just like, oh, just throws everything out the window. So you wanna know what sort of person you are and think about that as well. Because it's not just training preparation, there's also mental preparation. There's organizational preparation, there's mental preparation, there's training preparation. We wanna look at all of those things and then we want to start working on a plan for our next time around. And with those things in mind, we also, in a transition phase, want to have a little break, take a little bit of um, a dialing back. Um, quite often, if you're at a serious level, you might have done a fairly recent test of some sort on your ability, your FTP, your max aerobic power, those kinds of things. Just kind of get a little bit of a where am I gauge. And so that's good to just have in your, your diary before maybe you're taking some time off. Um, I feel very strongly that cross training and strength training in a transition phase is really important. Um, that you maybe bring it back to um, another sport that you do for endurance, um, not just cycling, and that can be dictated by where you are, of course, right? The snow falls, um, riding your bike inside, it's not a time to be doing 
too much riding inside. There's people that can do it all the time, every day. Um, you want to do some key rides and then maybe that's supplemented by cross-country skiing or hiking or some other thing that you do that gives you um, some endurance time and takes your mind off the slog of having an everyday focus and an everyday specific. So these are just some general ideas of what you want to be addressing at this time in the season. It can mean really different things for different athletes as well. I said, use your cross training. Well, you know, that could be, for some people, that's another cycling discipline. And it actually does take your mind away from what you've been training for. And one of the big things these days um, for a lot of road cyclists is, for example, put some time into being off-road because now, People are riding gravel bikes as an alternative. Um, you stay warmer, <clears throat> you're in the trees. Um, you get a little bit of just uh, being away from the grind of maybe your road riding. Um, you may have a completely different, um, I come from a running background. I've always used running, or now I call it um, hurry hiking because I don't run very fast, but running in the woods to give me some it's also a little bit of bone density, um, you know, uh, what do you, due diligence, I guess, but also just away from the pedal strokes, away from the regular routine and having something a little bit different that's also building, you know, my endurance, right? And, and some other elements if I'm throwing a little bit of fart lucky stuff into it. Some people have come from a swimming background or, or feel very comfortable in the water. That's another, <clears throat> another thing that's great for working on your breathing technique. Maybe you actually recognize in your event that you got a little bit kind of excited and a little bit out of control and it'd be good to go back to taking care of your breathing, right? Some people do that in the water is one way. Um, some people come back to a practice like yoga or something else that helps you kind of um, regain your inner composure and apply that later on to your event when your nerves are on edge and when there's a lot going on. So you need to look at what your experience was, what the positives and negatives were, and then start applying a plan for moving forward. And maybe take your time in what the next goal is gonna be. Maybe it was easy. Maybe it's just, I'm doing that again next year and I'm gonna do it better. But remember, when you say you're gonna do it better, better can mean a lot of things. And you want to identify what better is. Um, feeling better coming out of it. Uh, that can even be nutrition. I know for myself, I'm terrible. Uh, I'm, I'm good at, at, I know what to do, but um, I tend to be lax in taking care of my nutrition when I'm on the bike in an event. And it's always been a thing. I always have to think about it. And the result is quite often I can manage to get through, or I could, I should say, past tense really, manage to get through the event, probably compromising a little bit of performance at times, um, but also it's afterwards. It's how are you gonna feel for training in a couple of days? Did you eat and drink enough so that you can start coming out into another phase and feel good? So these are all things you wanna recognize from your event and start planning on as you're moving forward. It's a great time in transition. Some people relish competition and don't take every event seriously. Some people, when they go to a start line, there's always a feeling of pressure. And you've probably started to learn who you are, but you also want to think about, okay, lots of people go to another um, maybe ski racing, Nordic ski racing and doing some loppets or something. Or um, go to cyclocross is a typical one for road cyclists and, and mountain bike cyclists. So that's great if you want to do it, but also do a good assessment of if, it, if the pressure is taking away from your enjoyment and your regrouping. So 
If you need the time off to just be doing things with friends, do so. If you feel that the being out there with friends doing the start finish line is for you, then do so. You know, so it's very personal in that way and you want to figure out who you are. Some people thrive on going to a start line all the time, some people don't. And that can also be a little bit determined by the discipline that you race because some disciplines you don't race that frequently and some you race all the time. I know coming from running marathons and things like that where you don't run that many marathons a year, the idea of racing by bicycle day after day took me a little time to go, oh, you know, I, that's okay. Like you can race day after day and being a stage racer, that's what you get into. Um, another thing to think about if you did an event where you felt like the day after day started to wear on you, you want to think about things that you can do to help that the next time. And also to realize in those events that quite often a bad day is to be expected if you're doing a day after day event. Not that many people have um, a great day every day when they're doing maybe a five day event or a four day event or even longer, okay? So you wanna think about that. I think uh, in general, the reviewing and the recouping and the changing the channel to enjoy something else that you do are all super key parts of this phase. We help people with um, personal training programs because as you get into, as you get into more and more, you maybe do need someone to be uh, bouncing ideas off and reflecting on this with, but there's a lot you can do on your own. And there's a lot that you can do with your training partners and thinking about what your experience was and what you want for moving forward. So don't hesitate to um, check in with us at TAG if you want any more real guidance. But this is just a little, as I say, summary on some of the things to think about now and um, moving forward, how you're going to have a great season. <laughs>